Hey everyone, I'm Jen Mayer and I'm here with our Small Group Extra or Midweek Moment. This week we are talking about the preaching series Go because we are just about to celebrate Jesus' ascension to heaven and Pentecost and those last instructions he gave his disciples, which boil down to two things. Go make disciples and go be witnesses. And in all honesty, they're not commands that Jesus gives us as um, modern day Catholics that we are often like, I can't wait to go do that. Woohoo, we get to go make witnesses. Yay! But that's, most people think, yeah, that's like Father's job or it's somebody else's job, but it's not mine. And in this preaching series, what we're trying to help people understand is it's everybody's job to do that, and we will come out much stronger when everybody does it. So to dive in, I want to talk a little bit about a phenomenon that happens in society. More and more people, when surveyed each year, instead of saying they are in the religion that they were brought up in, will say they are now not affiliated with any religion. They are nothing. They're not a Christian. They're not a Jew. They're not a uh, Episcopal, they're not a Catholic. Um, and when you add the pandemic to that, um, and you know that that's sort of accelerating trends that were already happening, a really, really large portion of people that would have identified as Christians 30, 40, 50 years ago just aren't anymore. Um, so, the, the, you know, this catches the surveyor's interest, and so they ask, well, why? And one of the very top reasons cited is that bad example or the hypocritical nature of other Christians. In other words, I don't want to belong to a group that says one thing and does another. Um, like, why should I listen to them? Why should I belong to them? It makes no sense. And so that brings us to why it is so important not just to be witnesses, but to be credible witnesses of Christ's love to each other. And I want to talk a little bit about credibility. Um, so imagine that three people call you on the phone and they all say, hey, I have great news for you. One is a doctor, one is a salesperson, and one is a loan collector. Without knowing anything else, would you presume that any of them, in fact, had were telling the truth and had good news for you? And my guess is you might believe it about the doctor, um, particularly if you'd had a long relationship with them. It's possible you might believe it about the salesperson, although you're likely to be a little skeptical. Um, and likewise with the, the loan collector, uh, I'm going to guess that's probably the, the height of skepticism that you know, it just seems like their job in life is to collect money. And so if they're calling you, it's unlikely that they've really got good news for you. Might be good news for them, but doesn't feel like it's really going to be legitimate good news for you. So my point is that we all make um, split second decisions about whether or not we think people are credible before they start talking to us. And it filters the way that we then listen to them. And so if we want to be able to at any point have a conversation where we ask people about their faith uh, beliefs and listen to what they have to say, if they don't believe that we have their best interest at heart, they're never going to trust us. Um, and so that conversation's never going to go anywhere. Um, they're going to go, uh-huh, 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 goodbye. So that's why it's so very important that we are credible in our way of Christian life. Because when they meet somebody or they realize that you are the person in their life that is optimistic, although you know, grounded in reality, that you are joyful in, the, in, in tr troubling times, um, and that you seem to have a sense of being grounded in something bigger than yourself, they might actually think, wow, I want each of those things in my life. Um, and Every time that uh, we fail to live that way, we take some of our credibility away. Um, so the question I want to leave you with is, how do outsiders perceive the biggest disconnect between what Christians say and how they actually live their lives? 
And then what can we in our families and our small groups, what steps can we take to overcome those disconnects?